Welcome to Vienna. Down there is a 4.3 kilometer stretch of road where one man will attempt to go where no man has been before, pushing his body and mind to the limit with the aid of scientific research and meticulous preparation. Kenya's Eliud Kipchoge will hope to run 26.2 miles in under two hours, and in doing so, he will break one of the great sporting barriers of our time. What light, what future exists if we abandon the quest to discover the very limits of human endurance. I don't believe in a limit. That's what pushes me. To be human is to constantly evolve. Bannister goes streaking forward the mile in three minutes, 59.4 seconds. To run faster. Owen wins in 10.3. To reach further. This 18-year-old girl succeeded where men had failed. Scale new heights, pushing the human body to its absolute physical and mental limits. That's one small step for man. This is what separates us. One giant leap for mankind. As we strive towards a new era of human achievement. It's about nothing history. Who wins it ahead? And Bannister has done it. It's about living like us in this world. Eliud Kipchoge is the world's greatest marathon runner. At 34, he's the official world record holder. He has eight victories in big city marathons. He's the Olympic champion from Rio. And of course, there was that one failed attempt to go under two hours two years ago in Monza. But this is different. Lessons were learned from Monza and no stone has been left unturned in the preparation for this attempt to go under two hours. Here's the champion again, absolutely supreme. This is one man trying to run under two hours, which has never been done before in the history of mankind. He's the only athlete in the world capable of doing this. He is three times Abbott World Marathon Major World Champion, current world record holder, Olympic champion. He is absolutely the goat of marathon running. Elliot is extremely consistent in his life and in his, in his running. Very disciplined, obviously all unbelievable talented, nice, humble, beautiful person. I think especially the thing about him is, is his incredible working ethic. He's carrying with him values that all of us in, in whatever level in our society or in, in, in life can learn something from. Elliot say many times. 100% of me is nothing compared to 10% of the group. I totally believe in myself, believe in my, my technical team, believe in my teammates, believe in my training, and, what's what, and that's what pushes me uh, beyond the body. The 159 challenge, it's about uh, making history. It's about uh, living like us in this world. It's about actually uh, 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 giving information to, to the whole world that uh, uh, no human is limited. So after a few contenders, it was Vienna that came out on top. And the course is absolutely perfect. It's a 4.3 kilometer straight that will be raced 4.4 times with two roundabouts, one at either end. And the city itself ideal because it is a microclimate and the temperature predicted to be absolutely perfect for marathon running with very low chance of rain. You can see they're tree-lined as well with crowds along the side. So let's join our commentary team now, headed by Chris Dennis. What on earth seconds. is going through the mind of Elliot Kipchoge? How quickly, Ten. how fast is his heart beating? Five. We have liftoff. Apollo Kipchoge is up and away and the challenge very easy to say to run 26.2 miles 42.2 kilometers in under two hours very easy to say rather more difficult to achieve and they're on their way on the Reichsbrücke traveling over the Danube 
And they will be heading into the Plata very, very shortly indeed. Shalane and Ed have joined me in the commentary box. And uh, Shalane, former winner, of course, of the New York Marathon just, what, two years ago. In these early kilometres, what's most important for Elliot? Right now, Elliot is um, just completely relaxed. He is just in a state of flow. He's just locking in to the pace. Really, no mental energy is going to be wasted right now. It's um, almost kind of trying to fall asleep a little bit. He's just looking at the back of his pacers, uh, looking at the back of specifically Bernard Lagat right there. They've been practicing all week, these formations. He's very familiar with these guys. He's very comfortable. So he's just finding his rhythm, settling into pace, turning off the brain, saving all that mental energy for when it really starts to get tough and hurt, which is inevitable in the marathon. So into the second minute of this uh, extraordinary uh, challenge here. And of course, the crowd is really building already. We're expecting 20 to 25,000 people lining the route. It's absolutely perfect. It's tailor-made for spectating here. The Parta, uh, the green lung, if you like, of, uh, of Vienna, the largest park in the capital city of Austria, is going to be packed here. It's perfect. There's not a, a breath of wind. We're looking at beautiful autumnal colours and they make their way. Ed has joined us also in the commentary box. We're going to talk about the pacing in great detail throughout the next two hours, Ed, but just give us a sense of how revolutionary this open V formation is. Well, it just looks like it shouldn't work. They're, you know, they're, they're running with this wide front and, uh, and it's a reverse V, and you think, well, how can that work? But everyone tells me that it reduces drag on Elliott, and, uh, and they've done all the testing that they need to do to, to ensure that it's actually the, the optimal formation. Two men behind, of course, as we've said, and we'll uh, introduce you to the, the new teams as they come and go. The drop-in, drop-out function or system is going to be absolutely key, so we'll be making sure that we, we talk you through that. But essentially, in terms of formation, it's two at the front, two behind them, then the captain, and in this case, it's Bernard Lagat, the uh, multiple world and Olympic champion. There he is, centre picture, with all that experience at 44 years old. Elliot, of course, in the white, right at the heart of it, and then the two wingmen behind. And the way they come in and out uh, it will be absolutely key. The magic figure of 250-something has been achieved. It means they're through the first kilometre. <laughs> Approaching the time for the phase changeover, and as uh, I think Shalane was uh, was likening, here we go. Sh Shalane, talk us through this. Yeah, I was likening it to in uh, the, the U.S. A, a NASCAR pit stop where we change out tires, you know, fine tune um, the machine. Um, same thing goes here for Elliot. He's switching out and getting fresh runners that are hopefully smoothly transitioning into formation so that Elliot can just draft and conserve as much energy as possible. Well, you can see there Bernard Legat just giving a little hand clap and he just peels away. And Ed, as a first, as a first transition, and here's the new team taking over, team two with Eric Kiptanui now taking the Legat role as the captain just ahead of, of uh, Elliot himself. Ed, for you, how smooth was that? That was pretty smooth. And did you see that Bernard Legat hung around there? So everyone else in the team dropped out. Bernard Legat stayed in front of Elliot to give him the protection while the other team swapped in, and then he swapped out last. So Elliot Kipchoge should be now hitting the five kilometer mark. Ed, how is he looking? I think he looks pretty good, but then he always looks pretty good. So <laughs> let's see what, you know, they, they say in Kenya the race starts at 35. Um, if he's still looking good at 35, I think he's got, a, you know, a, a great shot. Um, but, you know, one of the tells that you have with Elliot, if we can uh, see him, is that sometimes he looks with his thumbs when he's very relaxed. He looks like he's brushing lint from his, uh, you know, lapels of his tuxedo jacket, perhaps. Uh, you know, you get this beautiful rhythm. And you know he's slightly in trouble when he stops brushing lint. So, um, you know, right now he looks super relaxed. And it doesn't look like uh, this pace is hurting him too much, but let's, let's see how he goes.
can see the, the, the recent splits there. The 2.50 mark in green means that he's on schedule for a sub two hour marathon pace. 2.52 and 2.51 in the red means he's just outside. He's been twice on target and twice just outside. Overall, look, eight seconds inside. It just shows us, Ed, even in these early stages, just how challenging it is. Yeah, I mean, I th they want to run even splits, but it is impossible to run completely even kilometers one after another. So what we're talking about here is someone trying to, uh, you know, get as close as they can to 250 for as long as possible. As things stand, he is uh, eight seconds in. The speed here, it's worth, uh, Shalane, just reflecting on this and just trying to put it into some sort of layman's terms. He is going to be running or trying to run consistently at 13 miles an hour, 21 kilometers an hour. Extraordinary. It's mind-blowing. You know, I challenge people to go out to their local track and just run one lap, 400 meters of the track in 68 seconds. I, I bet you not many people can do that. So um, that just goes to show, um, you know, and Elliot has to do that. Um, 105 times. Yes, I was, thank you for doing the math, 105 times. And here we approach um, the third transition here. Team three just about to take over, the captain, Brett Robinson. And uh, again, we'll introduce you to the members of uh, team three, but it's again another very smooth transition there. We can say Herrick, Henrik Ingebrigtsen, Philip as well, and Jakob center of picture, all fresh, as uh, Shalane was saying, from the World Championships in Doha. Again, marks out of 10, Ed, for that transition. I think that one was the best one yet. Agreed, that looks so smooth. You know, it could be that the fact that three brothers are so accustomed to running together, but that looked really smooth. And the crowd appreciated it as well. You can hear them tapping on the sides there, absolutely fully dialed in. There is Elliot. We've been talking about all sorts of things. And of course, we shouldn't forget that the man at the heart of this whole day, this whole several months, years of planning is Elliot Kipchoge. I'm noticing just a small, small gap from him to Matt Centrowitz. And I don't know, oh, if it was, you know, him just giving a little space or if he's kind of falling off a little bit. Um, I, it'll be interesting to see. Um, Hopefully he tucks right back in there with Matt. So through 20 kilometers, 2.52, so just outside the desired 2.50 pace for a sub two hour marathon. But uh, the green boxes show that those kilometers were within the uh, target. And you can see netting out of all that, we are still nine seconds inside sub two hour pace. 159.59, of course, is the target. Maybe even better than that. And the next milestone, Ed, will be the halfway mark and a reminder that in Monza two years ago when he had his first attempt at breaking the sub two-hour marathon, he went through in 59.57. Yeah, so we're looking for anything in the high 59s uh, is good. So let's see, I was I was noticing that gap as well to, to Matt Centrovitz and I was thinking maybe that's just the turn. You know, sometimes they get a bit strung out and I don't think we've seen them from the side really on the turn, but it seems to have closed up a little bit. I do see a little bit of strain maybe on his face. He's kind of puffing his cheeks, maybe doing a little smiling. It means he's working hard, um, as it should be. This should be hard. Um, but I can see some signs that I didn't see about 5K ago that he is he's working. I think he's, he's already working. Yeah, I think he's having a little difficult a little patch. patch. Here. Yeah. The last K, I guess, was 2.52 we're getting for um, the 22nd K and the 21st K was 2.48. Um, but yeah, distraction. It's all about mental distraction to take yourself out of the moment. 30 kilometers have been completed. And let's just go back to Monza, just as a little guide, because in Monza, he was two sec seconds outside of sub two hour marathon pace. Yeah, he's he's doing fantastically well. I, I saw a little grimace there, so uh, you know, obviously it's hurting. It would hurt <laughs> during this. Be expected. We are approaching 35 kilometers. We've got what just over 20 minutes of running to get Elliot Kipchoge 
home over the finish line inside the two-hour mark just to stress this has never been done before no it won't be a world record but the whole point of this exercise if you're just joining us was not to break world records he's already got the world record this was stretching the limits what is the limit of human endeavor and as the hashtag we've been using said and as Elliot says so eloquently uh, no human is limited he wants to do something that has never been done before we've had a man on the moon we've had Roger Bannister breaking the four minute mile 65 years ago we've had uh, Edmund Hillary on Everest all those years ago this would be Along the same lines, this will be an achievement of that magnitude. No human is limited, and we are now, Ed, into the last 20 minutes of this being a, a reality. I'm just watching his face here, and it is absolutely fascinating. His eyes are like dinner plates. He's having to talk himself through this. He's telling himself that he's got it, you know, he's smiling a lot. It is like... Um, it's like a man who's told himself to dismiss what his body is telling him. Yeah. His body is saying, stop. As the final team take over at 38 kilometres, led by Captain Legat, there he is, itching to go, Bernard Legat, a five-time Olympian, 44 years old, 13 world and Olympic medals to his name, and he is going to slot into place and Shalane try and bring Elliot home. This is the moment when you're in a track race and you go ding, 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 last lap. This is what we're going into. That was the ding, 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 the last lap. You know, Elliot said last night, I don't know where the limits are, but I'd like to go there. Just over four minutes to go and the pacemakers we are expecting to peel off and let him have the, the Hauptallee to himself to enjoy the moment, an historic moment, as we click ever closer to the magic figure of 159.59. As things stand, he will be comfortably inside two hours. Ed, how are you feeling from here? I feel like a bundle of nerves. Who thought they were going to see this in 2019? We haven't seen it yet, but who thought that this was possible in 2019? Yes, there are some, you know, parts of this which are, you know, uh, artificial in terms of the pacemakers, whatever. It's not a race. But who thought you'd see someone run sub two in 2019? It is beyond the imagination. When well, the conversation first started for the sub two effort, I said, no way. No way in my lifetime will I witness the sub two hour marathon. I truly did not believe I would be able to witness something like this. Well, the pace car will be peeling away at 41 kilometers and then it'll be down to the pacemakers themselves to bring Elliot home and all being well they will then peel off as well and leave Elliot to run home the final few hundred meters 1.2 kilometers to go he is almost there he has one hand on history here in Vienna there's Grace, his wife, looking on. She's never seen him race before in the flesh, remember. What a moment for her, what a moment for... What a moment for the children. The pace car is gone, we've lost the laser. He's it's getting now. One it's K now go. all down to Elliot and the pace The gloves are off. He's this getting is, quicker. He's racing right now, this is, this is racing. Well, this is true racing. Shalane knows what this feels like through the streets of uh, Central Park in New York, whether it's in Berlin, or London, but today is all about Vienna. Today is all about Elliot Kipchoge. We're down to the last couple of minutes to bring him home. Ed, some final thoughts from you. I'm overjoyed that particularly this man has got to do this. Uh, it's not just the barrier being broken, it's something that has existed in this person's head for so long, and I'm, it's so gratifying to watch, watch him achieve that. He's almost there. He can see the finish line. That's the view from Elliot Kipchoge. You can see the finish line where we are looming into view. 157 and approaching 158. I think we can say with some certainty there now he he's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's right going. There. He's telling him to move away. Come on, he says. Come on, this is it. Shalane, a final this thought from you. This is incredible. Elliot's performance is such a gift to the world. His running is a gift to all of us. 
I feel so blessed to be here today. I feel like, I hope everyone can hear me smiling through this microphone right now. I cannot stop smiling. 500 meters to go. He has the Hauptalli to himself. He's All the pacemakers have let him go. As Ed said, he is sprinting into the history books here. They're cheering him on. 400 meters to go. Let's bring him home. This is history unfolding on the streets of Vienna this morning. It's a Saturday run like we've never seen before. Listen at the noise, the crowd getting right behind him. Goodness me, 300 metres to go. He can see the finish line here. Neil Armstrong we had on the moon in 1969. We had Roger Bannister, the four-minute mile 65 years ago. Edmund Hillary, the first man to climb Everest in 1953. We have one minute to go. Elliot Kipchoge is on his way here. It's this, not humble, be a minute. this humble farmer who used to run two miles to school every day and back. He used to go to the nearest town on his bike to sell milk at the local market. And now, through hard work and discipline, he's pointing. Come on, he says. Elliot Kipchoge has the hand of history on his shoulder. He has. Less than 200 metres to go. Elliot Kipchoge, let's keep an eye on the clock. Into the final 20 seconds. Elliot Kipchoge. Whoa! Got his shoulder. 140. 140 for the unofficial oh, time. There's his wife. Elliot, Elliot Kipchoge storms into the history books in Vienna. 159.40, the unofficial time. The first man to run a marathon in under two hours. One final lung-busting stride for Kipchoge. One giant leap for human endeavor. And you know, Kipchoge was right. No human is limited. And now he can celebrate. He has done it. And to Roger Bannister, Neil Armstrong, Edmund Hillary, we can now add the name of Elliot Kipchoge. An absolutely wonderful scene. Radzi's going to get his microphone in under his nose, I'm sure, any moment now, and we'll hear the thoughts of Eliud Kipchoge. You have just made history. Yes, yes. You've become the first man to ever run a sub to our marathon. You've done it. Yes. How are you feeling? I am feeling good. Uh, it has taken 65 years for, for a human being to make history in sport. After Roger Panista made history in 1954, it took another 62, uh, 63 years. I tried and I did not get. I uh, now it's 65 years. I have tried. I'm the happiest man to run under two hours in order to inspire ma many people, to tell people that uh, no human is limited. You can do it. I'm expecting more of the athletes in this all over the world to run under two hours after 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 today. Well, we have witnessed history. It has been an incredible two hours here in Vienna. You were part of history. Goodbye.